I'm Satya Prem and at the moment I'm the coordinator of the International Yoga Teachers Association. I've been teaching yoga for probably 15, over 15 years. Uh, initially I did my yoga training through International Yoga Teachers Association. Uh, later on I decided to train also with Drew Yoga. Uh, so I finished my Drew Yoga training quite a number of years ago now and I assist in their teacher training so that's a good combination with the International Yoga Teachers Association and Drew Yoga. I've also had a long association with yoga in daily life. Okay, so with the IYTA for the future I can see that teacher training will still be a very very strong focus. It is the longest running teacher training course. It was founded in as the organization in 1967. So it really has trained thousands of yoga teachers. So in the future I think we'll really fine tune our courses. I think there'll be online teaching you know, and I'll give an example of that. Something like the Bhagavad Gita, which is ancient wisdom. We don't really have so much time to touch on that deep knowledge and wisdom contained within the Bhagavad Gita. But with online learning, we could easily set that up with readings, with reflections, with exercises and practices that may be appropriate to deepen our understanding of passages within the Bhagavad Gita. The same could be done with the Yoga Sutras. We are going to uh, really get ready with technology and be able to link us all around Australia to different parts of the world because we have members in 20 countries of the world. So I see for the future of IYTA that we'll do postgraduate mastery courses uh, the last group of students to go through, they've already asked for further input and that's happened and I can see that that will be ongoing training for their personal development. They are required to do this but it will be further developed. There might be a focus on those that really particularly want to teach yoga for children and teenagers or prenatal students or seniors so we can have focus groups for the postgrad mastery. Also I think for the future is I can see that there'll be more interconnectedness between yoga organizations and studios. So with Drew Yoga they're also for the future thinking about post mastery courses. At the moment I'm doing Drew Yoga meditation teacher training. It's a very comprehensive course and that's been over three years. So I think Drew Yoga in the future will develop a lot of post mastery courses and because they're very keen on the therapeutic element, I'm sure that will lead to a qualification in using yoga as therapy and also a more of a therapeutic um, approach to heal things like asthma, you know, deal with back care, chronic fatigue and so forth. Another thing that Drew Yoga is very focused on is bringing world peace initiatives into every part of the world. Dr. Mansuk Patel, who is the founder of Drew Yoga, he wants to see peace initiatives in schools, in hospitals, in community centres, uh, with leaders of the community. And this has already happened to quite a considerable extent. First starting, as Gandhi said, with inner peace, then outer peace. So those initiatives of the World Peace Flame and Peace Initiatives will be really highly focused on. In the past, Drew Yoga has gone into war-torn countries with their de-traumatization programs. And they've worked with people who have been really very um, terribly affected by war. So I can see that is also one thing of the future that Drew Yoga will really be focused on. 
Another thing for the future of Drew Yoga, which will be um, building on what they're already doing, is taking yoga into the corporate world and really building bridges there. Also taking it into medical centres and having that therapeutic approach, the benefits of yoga and its practices to help people with um, illness. They're also involved in many humanitarian projects, particularly in India, with women and with children. And I can see this will be developed in the future. So with yoga in daily life, they have a very systematic approach, which has been well researched. And so they have done a great deal of promotion of yoga and the depth of yoga. I think where I can see that developing in the future is the spiritual aspect of yoga. At the moment I think more and more people are gaining benefit from the physical aspects of yoga. So the mental emotional aspects they can also feel the, the benefits. And yoga in daily life because it does come from the tradition with Swamiji promoting that at every opportunity. You know, he's a guest speaker at World Parliament of Religions, at conferences, at the United Nations. Really, that deep spiritual aspect of yoga can also come through and really be focused on. And I think that's a direction for the future. So that the big questions, who am I, where am I going, what am I doing, what's my purpose here, what is my contribution? Those questions can be reflected on through a process of going deeper and deeper into yoga, through first of all the physical aspects, utilizing the breath, through the mental and emotional development, through the social health of a being, you know, working in a caring environment for our community, being part of a bigger picture, and then deeper still into that deep stillness that is within each one of us. And when we tap into that, that's where joy and happiness is. So more and more we hear about happiness and its causes conferences. So people are deeply interested in wanting that sense of joy, bliss, happiness, well-being. How do I get it? So I think yoga in daily life has got a wonderful program of real depth and spiritual knowledge. Bringing all the yoga traditions and participants together, I can see World Peace Initiative and humanitarian projects and projects to do with the environment and sustainability will also be something that will be projected into the future, bringing us all together and working together. It's still important to remain the unique flavor of all the different schools and organizations, the long traditions as in yoga and daily life that Swami Maheshwananda has brought down through his master and the master before him. So that's important to keep a system, systematic approach for yoga and daily life as in other schools. However, we do need to come together and work together for uh, bigger projects on a more global scale. At the moment it's happening to a lesser extent, I shouldn't say lesser extent, um, with Yoga Aid Challenge. Many people from yoga studios and schools and organizations have come to do 108 salutations to the sun and the money that they collect is donated to their favorite charity. So that's been hugely successful and I think that's great to see yoga practitioners, teachers all coming together and being united in a common cause.